Hi everyone, it's Raina. So this video is if you have your Sun in Scorpio and Leo rising. Wow, what a combination. I always have to think when Leo and Scorpio are in personal points, there's going to be kind of a egoic nature of some sort. Now I didn't say egotistical, I said egoic because I don't want to make it something that is for sure bad. But these are both strong signs. And I can even say strong willed because these are fixed signs. So the will is connected to fixed energy. And that's where stubbornness comes in when somebody is willful. So um, basically, these two signs square off in terms of aspects. And the square is a frustrating angle that indicates there's a blockage. There is like kind of this obstacle that the person is facing that involves these two points, namely the sun, which is the aspirational self and how we came to shine our light in this incarnation and the rising sign, which is the cusp of the first house and it's the body, it's the way you dress. And it's the way you carry yourself. So with Leo being the rising sign, there is a lot of, there is extra uh, going on here. Extra inflections. The person is over the top, okay? And this is their calling card. So they can suck the oxygen out of the room because they are so... Um, you can call it, um, very boisterous, theatrical, dramatic, entertaining, warm. These are things that I think can benefit Scorpio because Scorpio, not that Scorpio is cold, Scorpio is a water sign. So there definitely is caring associated with Scorpio, but it is kind of private, mysterious, secretive. A, a Scorpio person, you know, sometimes I'll do readings for people and I always tell people I don't consider myself a psychic, but I read emails and I get a vibe from the email. I get a feeling for the person. And sometimes I can tell that the person is kind of keeping, I, I feel like they're afraid to... Uh, say much about themselves like they're kind of closed off and they may give me their their information so I don't but I don't know automatically what the rising sign is until I put it into the chart generator and sure enough if they're not a sun in Scorpio they may have these either inner planets or they have Scorpio rising and there's like kind of this distrust towards others, which makes them not really very revealing of much of anything. So this makes you much more of a open, an open book. However, I do feel that's a facade and people can be downright shocked once they get to know you, how much they don't know about you. Like you may be, it's kind of like uh, smoke and mirrors. Um, you may be like, um, there's another all, <laughs> I, I should use this one for the title, all, all hat and no cattle, um, where there's a lot of, I don't even know if that's a correct saying um, for this particular context, but still, it would be funny to say it. You're, you, you kind of... Um, Fill up a space very fully, but it can be all show. It's not necessarily your true self. So this is perfect actually for a performer or celebrity because um, let's face it, a lot of times this is the problem with social media and content creators on social media is that they don't, they, they kind of just jumped into these things not realizing what celebrities have to learn the hard way, that if you overshare, and it's so easy to do when you're online, 
you can create a, a scenario where you deplete yourself. I just read something about, you know, when you overshare, you leak your energy. So this may be something that you struggle with, Scorpio, where you tend to be like, um, I don't think you necessarily overshare though. That's the point. So I'm kind of contradicting myself and making things confusing. However, even by the mere fact that you are, you know, really hamming it up, um, that can be quite, uh, over the top. And I mean, you know, in terms of draining yourself. So it can be something where you really get the attention, but at what price? So yeah, this is definitely, um, anybody who has Leo on the ascendant is a shoe in for being a great actor or actress or performer in general, because you're a natural ham, maybe when you're a kid, because the Leo energy may really describe your childhood. Um, perhaps you either came from a family that were entertainers or that were just plain loud, or you had to vie for the attention of others. So you had to be extra outrageous or, but you might've had this talent from a young age and people cheered you on. And if that's the case, that's awesome. Even if you have no aspirations towards the stage or anything like that, um, you definitely would uh, probably benefit from blowing off steam at an open mic, in the community theater, someplace where you could showcase your talents and just get that need for attention satisfied in a productive way. Because if there isn't that outlet, this could definitely be diva energy. Scorpios, it has been said, can fly high or sink low. Something to that effect. I always remembered that. Um, I'm mangling the, the quote, but it's, it gives the gist of it. The shadow aspect of Scorpio people is delving in psychodrama and, you know, particularly, particularly, <laughs> per, particularly in maybe your relationships with significant others, maybe that's where it comes out the worst, that fear of abandonment, that fear, uh, well, the fear of being cheated on is the fear of abandonment, um, but other kinds of things, the, the suspicion, that could be fear of abandonment too, though, at its core, but all of those behaviors that make you not trust someone, they can also lead to relationships full of drama and kind of like power struggles because um, Scorpio rules things connected to, to power through Pluto, but also I believe Mars, which is your co-ruler and, and involved in aggression. And to me, that's like a form of control. So, uh, and also, uh, Mars can be the anger and that, so that can be the drama too. And a lot of this can be, you know, being an adult and the trauma of childhood finally catching up to you. And especially when you're in that primary relationship, uh, versus like a friendship where the stakes might not be as high you may feel the most vulnerable in a romantic relationship and it brings up all those demons. And so with the Leo rising, it can lead to some really cringe moments of, you know, trying to assert your superiority. There can be a very haughty air 
from Leo, a very, you know, like the diva, the A-lister. And, you know, I think of, they made a gif out of um, Nora Desmond in uh, Sunset Boulevard, and it's perfect. Her going, you know, uh, what's that saying, in, famous saying in Sunset Boulevard? Uh, I'm ready for my close-up. And, you know, it just kind of, like, means somebody who's totally delusional, basically. And that, that to me, is very scorpionic. That, that whole movie and what that represented, because, you know, this woman was, like, a shut-in. But she remembered when she was this big deal in Hollywood. But that shut-in quality reminds me of, like, that Scorpio that has kind of become, you know, started hiding out and being very secretive for, uh, towards the public and uh, yet has this past glory that she is trying to, re you know, rekindle. So I highly recommend that movie, by the way. It's one of my favorites. Um... So the square that's formed here, and of course you do have to, you know, see if it forms a square for you between your sun and rising, is the frustration is that you want to be mysterious, but your Leo gives you away. Your Leo is so, is like a loose cannon maybe. And in terms of how you dress, it may be very flashy, it may be with a lot of shiny colors uh, or, you know, fabrics or things like that. Um, you may favor yellows, golds, because Leo is ruled by the sun, but any bright color uh, may be appealing to you. I was thinking of those zoot suits from the 40s that were all you know, very bright colors. And you still see people sometimes wearing uh, bright colors. Red, maybe it's something like red, but I mean, that's, I would associate that more with Aries, but because your sun sign has to be factored into things and it's Scorpio, um, the color for Scorpio, I would say is like dark colors, but also maroon, blood red, that kind of thing. Uh, so you may just kick it up a notch and make it bright red. But anything that, you know, is very shimmery, glittery. Uh, but just in terms of your demeanor, it's very confident. And confidence is a very uh, good indicator of success. When somebody is confident, they inspire confidence in others. And if somebody is insecure, other people will not put a lot of faith in them for that reason. So it is so good to have, to cultivate that confidence within yourself. So you can be the kind of person who is very uh, warm. I think I said that already. But um, a natural leader, you can take leadership uh, over situations. But you, you know, by the same token, you have to be careful. Are you overstepping your boundaries? Are you being a over? Are you being overbearing on a situation because you just naturally take charge? So being able to see that without having that bias of having the sun in a water sign is super important. Because remember, if your sun is in Scorpio, it means that you may have inner plants in Scorpio. And if you have, let's say you have Mars in Scorpio and it forms a square with your ascendant, then it's like people may not want to cooperate with you because... They don't get a good first impression of you. They don't have a good feeling about you. They may think the worst. They may think that you're power hungry. They may think that you're a diva, that you're full of yourself. And they might be 
slightly right sometimes if you're not careful, if you don't rein it in. But this can be, um, I do think that this can be very uh, good for somebody who is trying to be successful in the world because you just have what it takes to promote yourself in the best possible light as a, as a go-getter, as an ambitious person. Um, but you're also a very creative person because both of these signs, the water element with Scorpio and Leo in particular rules the fifth house of creativity. So that can indicate a person who is super creative and confident. And those two things are also important because if you don't believe in your own art, your own work, it's going to be next to impossible to get, to get anyone to believe in you. Although certainly if somebody is talented enough, it will show and other people will, you know, compliment them. So I'm not saying that that's true uh, completely. In love, you can really go after a person, and this could be male or female doing this. Um, and then you don't know what to do with this person once you get them, because the Scorpio Venus is super I shouldn't say the Scorpio's Venus, but the Scorpio person's attitude towards love is a mixed bag because, uh, and you may, you know, your sun sign is in Leo. You may have Venus in Leo because it's fraught with a lot of tension, wondering if you're going to be abandoned, if you're going to be betrayed. So you, I think I said, you know, mentioned this earlier about having trust issues. It's not, as simple as just being um, in a relationship and loving somebody, um, that can make you feel vulnerable. And Scorpio people hate feeling vulnerable. You really regard vulnerability as a weakness. And that is, to me, a flaw of the sign of Scorpio because um, trying to maintain your emotional control at all times can be very exhausting, but it also can be alienating. It can keep you from getting what you want. So it becomes a vicious cycle. But it just is like instinctual within you to stand back and keep away. And yet that Leo rising is very, might be an aggressive pursuit of some kind of love in your life. And if you really learn to, to fully um, allow yourself to, to open up, you can have like amazing experiences with love because Leo is like a born romantic. And so there's always that dramatic flair when it comes to love. But the Scorpio person is very devout with the person that they love. There's nothing frivolous about it whatsoever. Once you um, feel secure with a, a partner, you may have a lifelong relationship because we're talking about two fixed signs here, not to mention what else might be going on in your chart. And you just feel like uh, loyal to that person and you're going to be... Uh, enjoying this, this, um, romantic side of things as well. In terms of professions, other than the entertainment field, I could see this combination maybe being a good teacher. 
where you, especially with the younger grades, where you can animate them and feel more creative in the process of, you know, what the... Fifth house represents, um, with Leo, is the children, creativity. So something along that line, those lines, maybe an art teacher or a drama teacher, especially earlier ch childhood, because that's when children are more imaginative and that's something that you would uh, be very good at tuning into. Now, um, if your midheaven is Taurus, then it, it might be in the financial sector and certainly Scorpio is connected to other people's money. So an investment banker or something along those lines. And I think uh, Leo people can excel in various types of businesses. The key is to uh, be able to put your sense of self in its proper perspective and understand that every, every other human being ha is like an, is like, a, um, a universe unto themselves. So even though you may very strongly feel your personality, um, Scorpio, it's important to give other people the chance to express theirs. So never to overshadow people. Try, you know, if you feel, if you felt like the need for attention for some reason, maybe if you were ignored when you're a child, um, or you were given like center stage, part of the growing up or the maturation process is to realize that what we needed at one time is not what we need now. And that we can't make up for the past through what we do now. It doesn't work that way because we have different needs as adults than we did when we were children. And I think of it as a democratic process where, you know, if you go to a party and you tend to be the center of attention, that you hold other people up, that you are you know, interested in learning more about other people. You know how they say, talk less, listen more? Well, that might be something that is very helpful for you in your own life, but also that it attracts you to the people that you would have the most in common with overall. Connecting with people at a deep level is super important to you. So not... You know, having a bunch of superficial friendships may make you feel good in a very shallow way, but ultimately it's not going to lead you to what it is that you're truly in, interested in, which is having that sense of um, deep connection. Okay, that's what I have for you. I hope that this resonated. If you like my approach and you would like to learn more about your chart, I have a double reading offer called my deep dive reading, which has like a whole hour of chart analysis of different things that you've got going on in your chart and also patterns that you may have that are holding you back from achieving more and also talents to play up. But this is in addition to looking at transits that are coming up for you in the next year. This package is called my deep dive reading. It's at a discounted price because you're buying two readings. I have another type of reading that combines the nail chart analysis along with a full-length tarot reading called my whole enchilada reading. You can find out more about my readings because I have standalone readings too at the link below. Take care. Bye.